let's calculate the stock price for MFA Financial. And the market cap is 765.8 million. And their stock price is $1.69. And this is a REIT. And now we need a free cash flow. And the best way to calculate the stock price for a company is to estimate future free cash flow and discount that number back to today's values. That's exactly what we're doing in this video. Next is net income, and we go to the income statement for that. And all the numbers are positive, which is a good sign. And last is revenue. So the numbers look pretty consistent. It is a really small company, so it's hard to value. Now we need interest expense. And they pay 332 million in interest. And if we look on the balance sheet in Yahoo to find their debt, they don't really list it. They just list total liabilities. So let's go to um, the 10K. And they list, they break out liabilities, the repo agreements and other liabilities. So repo agreements are debt. So we'll take that number. And they pay 3.64% interest on the debt. And in Yahoo Finance, I can't really figure out their effective tax rate. They don't they don't list income taxes, and it's really hard to tell in a 10K also. So I'm just gonna use 20%. And you can see they have a ton of debt, so that's not a really good sign. But maybe for this type of company, it's okay. I'm not too sure. Um, let's get the beta 1.52 and the beta is the volatility of the stock so it moves one and a half times the market so the cost of equity is 14 percent and we use a cap m model and the cost of debt oh, let me fix that should be let me fix that formula Cost of debt is 2.9%. Now, equity is more expensive than debt because equity sits lower on a capital structure. And in the event of a default, debt holders are paid before equity holders. So, so equity holders take on more risk, so therefore they get a higher return. But since this is mostly debt, it's weighted more towards the cost of debt, the 2.9%. So the weighted average cost of capital is only 3.8%. And we estimated the future free cash flows of the company in four, the next four years. And then we did a terminal value, which is all years beyond year four. And in my newest version of the model, because it keeps changing the more companies I do, I built into it a feature that looks at the debt of a company. And that's why, so it took a haircut on the debt. And my older model wouldn't have been able to calculate this company uh, value. So when we present value those cash flows to today, we get these numbers and the total is 1.2 billion. And when you divide that by 453 million shares, we get a stock price of 263. So it is trading at a discount, a 36% discount. So we do consider this a buy. And as you can see, the stock was trading like seven, eight, nine dollars in the past few years, but did drop. So it's really hard to value a small company like this. It's almost impossible. It's kind of like, who could have valued Amazon, a trillion dollar company, when it was losing hundreds of millions of dollars or billions of dollars the first decade? No one knew. Um, same thing with this company or any other company. It's just really unpredictable, the future, even more so for smaller, companies and as you know everybody has their own opinion on a stock this is my model in my opinion so thanks for watching